H&M is the official partner of the Fashion and Color podcast, partnering with Harlem's Fashion Row for two years in a row for our Sustainability Summit. H&M is revolutionizing fashion by turning recycled materials into breathtaking, eco-conscious collections, such as Heron Preston, to reshape the fashion landscape through collaborative efforts like the H2 Collection. They are not just crafting clothes, they are crafting the future of fashion. So this week's guest is so super special to me personally. He has become an icon in fashion with his incredible line of accessories and now ready to wear as well and, who, and shoes and who knows what else he has up his sleeves. But he has uh, become a household name and not just New York, but globally. I am so excited to welcome Brandon Blackwood to the show. Thank you. I finally got you in this seat. I know. Seat. If everyone only knew <laughs> all the behind the scenes to make it work, well, I'm so happy I'm here. I'm so happy you're here. How you feeling? I feel good. Good, good. I'm all over the place. It's been a very hectic month, I'll say. So. No, no, no. Let, let's take this back, Brandon. It's been a very hectic year. It's been insane. Like, honestly, we launched a ton of we did the shoes, the studio, obviously bags. I always joke with my assistant, I'm always like, next year it'll be probably a little calmer. <laughs> and it's like doubles every time. So now it's just like, I'm like grateful for it, but yep. I'm... <sighs> Tore up a little it's bit. A lot. <laughs> yeah. it's a lot. But you keep releasing category mm -hmm. after category after category. Like, mm -hmm. is it just, does it just like the inspiration comes and you're like, I'm just going to do it? Well, I feel like, to be completely honest, I never wanted to come and be like a one trick pony. Mm. I knew that I didn't just want to do accessories. Like, handbags are like my first love. Yeah. But I always knew I wanted to do shoes. I love clothes, you know, I just wanted to play around with it in the way that made sense for my brand and our like little ethos that we're like making. So I yeah, and I just, I'm also like a Libra, so I'm very indecisive. And I'm just like, you know what, I have these like random like popcorn ideas. Yep. But my problem is I follow through on them. <laughs> so then, you know, yep. I'll wake up and be like, we should just make a line of, you know, bodysuits. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily make sense, but it works, you know. Right, so right, right. Yeah. So where did this all start? Like, take me to the beginning because <laughs> I've been doing we've been doing Harlem's Fashion Row since two thousand and seven. Mm -hmm. I have not seen your story. Oh wow. Any story that even looks like yours mm -hmm. it, in this entire time. It's definitely, like, I always joke with my team and say, like, we're a little bit of, like, an anomaly. Yep, you because are. Because we, well, I didn't really follow the standard fashion trajectory to, you know, and do things the right way. Mm -hmm. But um, I actually went to college for neuroscience. So crazy. I was there. It actually on, like, makes sense, to be honest with you. You know, it kind of uh -huh. does play into <laughs> a little bit, does. especially, like, with the marketing and stuff. Yep. But um, went to school for neuroscience, then... And I, I only did that because like, I got like almost like a full like ride for free. So I wasn't gonna say no at Bard College. Then on my breaks, like, you know, the spring break, winter mm -hmm. breaks, I would lie to my parents and tell them I was in some like science scholarship. But I was really like at Nylon Magazine, Elle Magazine, like interning. Uh -huh. I'd be there from like, you know, that was before internships were like as cushy now. Like right. it was like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Right, right, you there right, before right, everybody, right. you leave after. Right. And I was doing that and I fell in love. Wow. And I just kept doing that. And then I feel like by my junior year, I was like, I want to do fashion. But I needed to graduate. So I found a way to finesse my senior thesis paper. Um, professor Donna Grover, a black woman, black professor, she was kind of my rock in college. And she saw it and she would always be like, you need to. Mm -hmm. Fashion's a thing. For yeah. You. And I was like, okay. So my senior thesis ended up being on Dan Van Furstenberg okay. and the wrap dress, but I did it in like a weird neurological way and why it would make so sense. So you still graduated? It was, yeah. With a neuroscience it's degree? It's crazy, so. I, and then I got, after college, I got into a radiation program and I thought I wasn't gonna get in, but uh -huh. I just did it to like make everybody happy. 
I got in, I actually did one day of, you do like a trial day where you get your scrubs and stuff, it's like blackwood on it. And it was just like zapping patients all day with, you know. Right. And I was like, no, I'm not doing this. So I moved out my mom's house, started working at Crossroads Trading, and then randomly I just wanted to make a backpack for myself. This makes like no sense. So, it, so, like, so it hold just on. How do you randomly go make a backpack for yourself? Most so, people say they want a backpack and they mm -hmm. go find a backpack. Yeah. So when I was younger, I used to like go in my mom's closet and stuff and like cut up her clothes. Mm -hmm. And like I always like making myself little things. Two of my really uh, good friends, Sophie and Serena, they both have bags that I like stitched, <laughs> I think from like middle school. Oh my gosh. So it was always kind of there. But I don't know, I was like really bored and I just mm -hmm. looked up and I just made one. Um, I lied to the factory and was like, oh, I have a brand ball, but I just need one sample because I just need one bag. Mm -hmm. I made it and because I was a, at Crossroads, I met a lot of like editors, stylists, you know, people get gifted stuff and sell mm -hmm. it on the side. So I was making friends with these people because I was buying their stuff in. I would show them that my backpack. And one person in particular was at the time an editor at Essence. And she was like, oh, I'm going to put it in Essence. And I remember she was like, I need a high-res photo. I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> I was like, what's a high-res photo? <laughs> so <laughs> I remember getting all that together and seeing it. And just like, you know, a roundup of like, you know, five backpacks to look out for whatever. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to take this serious. And, and one of those five backpacks was... Brendan Blackwood, mm -hmm. like you said that that was the name of the it, brand. Yeah, I I didn't know what I was doing. I had to like run and get an LLC. Like I did, really did not know what I was doing, and it just worked out. So when you decided, okay, I'm gonna take this serious, what was the first step? I mean, I had to go back to the factory. <laughs> uh -huh. to. I was like, hey, I need to make more samples of different things. So my first collection was like four pieces. It was a tote bag, a backpack, a wallet and a smaller little like shoulder moment. I don't know what I was doing. Even the fact that your first collection was like five pieces, Brandon, that I don't is like not... just one thing. I don't know, I just can't that do it. That is not like normal or regular. I mean, the quantities I was ordering were was like 10 units. I was just trying to figure it out. I made my website. I was doing our customer service, all that stuff, all at once. I was shipping them out on my break at Crossroads, I would go, bring my orders with me and like ship them out during my lunch breaks. All that and this, stuff. what year was this? This was 20, I want to say 15, okay. 16. And I just kept doing that and in doing that. More While you were people, working. So yeah. you're working your full-time job. There was no way I could survive off selling like you, 10 bags, you know, <laughs> but I was paying New York rent. So, it was so at what point, like what happened to make you go, okay, actually I'm about to leave my job and uh, do this. A really bad boss, actually. I just got fed up one day. I was like, I'm going to have to make this work. So I left earlier than I should have. But I just... Same. I quit I did a job. the same thing. Really? I quit way earlier than I should have. So when people ask me advice on when to leave my job, I'm like, don't ask yeah, me. Yeah. I'm always like, stay as yeah, long as you can. But right. But sometimes, though, that pressure, though, Brandon, like that pressure of like, no, I have to make this work. Mm hmm it gives you what you need to like. It makes you actually do the thing. I think yeah. I had like maybe 1500 to my name and then my bags. I used to store them in my closet, like with my clothes and mm -hmm. I take them out and ship them. I was like, well, I'm gonna have to make this work. And I don't know how, but I did. Okay. We gotta, okay. So you quit the job. Mm -hmm. You're like, I gotta make this work. Mm -hmm. Like. Do you at that point make a plan? Do you go on the streets and sell your like yeah. what happens? I made the business plan, but I couldn't follow the business plan because I had no funding or money. Right, right, so right. Anything I was making from the brand, I'd have to put back into it. So I had a good friend, Joel. He was working at a store on Orchard Street at the time. I hit him up, I was like, Can you ask the owner if I could do like a trunk show? And I would Email, I would find people's emails like online, like people I should not at that time been emailing. Like I was not mm -hmm. there yet. Mm -hmm. I was just emailing people on my Facebook, everything, just being like, come through. That's like little things like that, getting sales. 
I was really crazy online with like marketing and like doing my little ads and stuff, just trying to make things work. And it kind of did over time, like start to grow. Um, a lot, everybody was trying to be an influencer then, mm -hmm. so that really helped as well. Yeah. So I was saying them out to my friends and like people I kind of knew and just trying to get the word out like as organically as I can, I guess. So 2015, you make your first bag, mm -hmm. right? Then when did you leave your job? What year was that? <clears throat> that was probably like three years after. So let's say around 17. 2018, 2017, yeah. 2018, mm -hmm. you leave your job. Yeah. You're like, I got to make this happen. So from mm -hmm. 2018 to now, was that six years? Yeah. That's not a long time to do what it, you've done. It isn't, but it feels like it, just knowing all the stuff I had to deal with. But yeah, yeah it wasn't as long as like, I know a lot of people wait much longer to have yeah. that moment. So I'm very grateful for it. Did the Even growth it. feel fast to you? It was crazy. I mean, in 2020, we grew like, I think, 50,000%, which is like not normal. What? And it was... What happened? It was uh, <laughs> during, you know, Black Lives yeah. Matter. Everyone started looking for Black designers to support. Yep. And it went from, like, around 2020, like, the brand was mm -hmm, cute, you mm -hmm. know? Like, we, we had, like, 10K <laughs> followers, mm -hmm. I think. That just overnight like people were really interested and at that point it was me and my apartment like the apartment was two stories in the basement it was just be like me imani and nima imani is now my vp and nima is like now my head of logistics mm -hmm. and we would just be on our laptops nima would do customer support imani would just do all the outgoing emails to everybody and i was there just talking to the factories and making sure it was getting to us or whatever it needed to get so it was three of us all under maybe 27 at the time with now this like 50 000 percent growth that is like insane. it got to a point where the girls wouldn't even go home they would like we would just have sleepovers for like four days straight just working what and like just go out to lunch lots of wine was involved just like trying to figure it out yeah and yeah it was nuts it was rough at first our customers were like, cursing us out because from right. the outside, it looked right. like very, you know, calm. Right. But people didn't know it was only three people. Oh, my it goodness. It was crazy. And then we immediately started making moves, you know. Um, we grew out the team to eight people. Um, one of them is actually here. <laughs> Ramona. I've known Ramona. My, she's my director of PR. Oh, I've known wow. her since I was 12. Wow. Ramona moved back to the city, and it was so funny. It wasn't even like a, hey, girl, like... I need help. One day we were just supposed to hang out. She came over and she was like, where's your decks? Like, where's all the stuff? I was like, I don't know. She sat down and like literally did a deck in my living room uh -huh. for me, like just being a friend. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh girl, you can't go nowhere now. <laughs> like, and <laughs> now, yeah, like, and that's kind of how the team grew. So a lot of people on my team, I've like just known through life because we were just picking up all the friends, anyone that could help. And now, Wow. We're like a lot bigger, but. When you grow that fast, mm -hmm. there is this growth spurt that has to happen with you, like as a, like an entrepreneur. Yeah. What was that growth like? And what do you wish you had known before that growth happened? I wish I knew everything I knew now, but I only know that now because I had to deal with stuff and fumble a lot of things. Yep. But it was tough, like having to time out when things are getting to a warehouse. I'd never worked with a warehouse before. Having to do like large scale QC, because we never had to do that. I was ordering like 10, 20 units before, you know, not thousands. Like learning how to do all that in real time while keeping a growing customer happy with a team of like people who I think are great, but we all had a lot of learning to do, you know? Right. And it was rough. It was rough. I think personally, and it's kind of sad to say, but like, I don't think I'll ever be as like joyous and happy as like before when I was like more like naive. Mm -hmm. I think I got a lot of responsibility, a lot of responsibility very quickly. Like before this, I was just I was working retail. You know, mm -hmm. I used mm -hmm. to just clock in, do what I got to do, go home. Now it's like, okay, you're taking care of yourself and two other people. Then your team's eight people. Then your team's twenty people. You know, some of my employees like have kids and stuff. It's just like 
it becomes such a thing where I can't separate myself anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I am brand black with like the brand itself. And it's weird. It's like you learn to do it and you learn to lead the best you can. And I fumble still a lot. Like I will never say I'm like the best CEO or founder or leader. Like I have my days where I'm just like the worst. I have my days where I don't know what I'm doing, but it's just really scary. And I feel like now a lot of like my joy for what I do weirdly comes from like, at least like my employees are like happy or like, you know, my, yeah. you know, my grandma's good. You like things like that make yeah. me happy. But I feel like internal happiness is a little harder because I don't have time to focus and sit and just well, enjoy it. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. You're the brand. Mm-hmm. Brandon Blackwood is a brand. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's like, like a tangible brand. It's right. weird. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's insane like... when you think about it. <laughs> then you're the founder, mm-hmm. and then you're the CEO. Mm-hmm. That's a lot in one. Yeah. So, you know, I think you're okay. Yeah, <laughs> I try, and then we don't even have like investors. You know what I mean? So, like, literally every order we get, that coin goes back into what we're doing, what yeah. we're planning. I need to take some home. Like, it's tough. Yeah. It's so tough. What I love, though, I will tell you, and I think the sense of pride that everyone feels when it comes to you is when I order a Brandon Blackwood bag, Mm -hmm. like, it's an experience. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's like, it feels like a luxury, like me ordering any other luxury Mm -hmm. item. I mean, there's like the box and the wrapping and the like the dust bag, all, the like, dust bag, and the mm-hmm. all and, and I'm just open and the whole time I'm opening it's just like full of joy the entire it's, way. And you know, that was super intentional. I think in the beginning, like the old old like first customers, we were shipping them dust bags, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I remember, I forgot where I was. I think it was Low Ave because I started getting really obsessed with Low Ave. Like once I could like buy some, you know. Mm-hmm. And I remember like I would miss the unboxing part of it, you know, because yes. it was like nice. And I was like, it's not normal to buy like a hundred and fifty, two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar bag and get that experience. But I was like, why not? You know what I mean? Right. I think it's a part of marketing in itself. It is. It's giving my customer who like you know. Maybe it isn't going to Chanel every day. Right. The same type of like hype low moment. It's still yeah. special. Yeah. I think my stuff is really cute. And I think it my is. stuff also deserves to be presented like that. And I was like, you know, give the girls what they want. And I started doing that. The first year we started boxing our stuff like that. Our marketing budget for the year, like when we do our PLs, we just spent nothing because it was so many unboxings online because people were get so excited to buy their bag, yes, they'd remove the cover and do yep. the dust bags. It was such a moment. Then it just became a thing where, I mean, per day, like I would just repost on Instagram, maybe like 80 unboxings every yeah, day. That's insane. And it was just kind of doing its own marketing. More people were finding out about it. And like, you could spend, you know, $200 and not spend your whole check and like have a cute moment, have a cute bag and so continue cute. on. So I love that I'm never gonna not, even with our studio, um, like a lot of the pieces are like twenty dollars, but the what hang pieces? tags, the studio, like my like rib pieces and stuff. Oh. I still do like really thick, like really good feeling like hang tags mm-hmm. and like how we package it. They're in poly bags, but I want like a matte one. Like yeah, those small details make a big a difference. A big difference. Yeah. A big difference. And I always, I'm from Memphis, mm-hmm. which we got to get you to Memphis at some point. Yes, but. I can tell to me my benchmark mm-hmm. whether like a designer has like really broke through is mm-hmm. if people in Memphis know about them. Mm-hmm. And so I was actually in um a city Murfreesboro, which mm-hmm. is right outside of Nashville at like a college MTSU speaking. And I had I whatever I wore, like had a Brandon Blackwood bag. Mm-hmm. And all the college girls were, forget about me. I see you, Brandon Blackwood. I see you, Brandon Black. And I was just like, this is a whole. <laughs> like, what is going on? <laughs> uh, and so I was like, oh, he has broken through. Like, it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thing, thing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. That's amazing. What you've achieved and what you've accomplished 
is absolutely incredible. When you're thinking about other designers, I'm sure people come to you and they're asking you for advice all the mm -hmm. time. And it is so hard for designers of color to make it in this industry. Like, what's one of the things that you're giving people advice about? One thing I always tell them is stop trying to make and sell things to a client you don't know. In the mm. sense that, like, for me, I think That's what works... so good. No, it's true. Like, I did not grow up with, like, $3,000 handbags around me and my mom carrying that stuff. You know what I mean? So how crazy would that mean to, for me to try to make that? I mean, go for it if you think you can do it. But then think I'm going to sell out or, like, sell mm. the quantity that I can sell now. I wanted to always make something where my cousins in Atlanta could afford it. My best friends from school, you know what I mean? My family can actually go to my website, click and like check out and not have to sweat. And I've always said, you know how people say like network out, not up? Yep, yep. I saw the same way with like sales. Like I want the people who actually mess with me and like, like me to be able to buy my stuff and not alienate them with like, an $800 item or like right. something that's not really realistic. And I think because people were able to buy my product at a very attainable price is what kind of catapulted me like relatively quickly into where we are today. Absolutely. So I always tell people like, yes, you can have those dreams and like still do the thing because right. we right. all like a nice thing. We like to see a crazy gown or a crazy right. moment, but make sure your customer has something or you have something in your collection that's a little easier, yeah, you know, to purchase. Yeah. So I tell all my friends that, like I love all that. my fellow designers and people. That's such great advice. Your marketing campaigns are so epic. That's where Thanks. that, the neuroscience, mm -hmm. it's like sometimes I'm watching, there was like something and there was just like this sticky thing. And I was just like, oh, yeah. why can I stop watching this? Mm -hmm. They it's, are incredible. What? What are you thinking about when you're thinking about marketing? You know, I don't think, and I think that's why it works. Mm -hmm. If you saw my DMs with um, Gabriella, who's kind of like my head of production, mm -hmm. like the people who did that slime video with the bag, I literally saw their page and sent it to Gabby. It was like, yo, how much would it be for them to just play around with the bags and slime? It already does well on its own. Right. Slime is such a thing, which is weird, but it's a thing people right. are into. Throw a bag in it. Social media basically tells you what's, what's already work. cool and what's going to work. Yeah. Throw your product in it. So that's yeah. what I do with everything. Like, seriously, anything. There's this um, girl we worked with. I think she's in Brazil. She made a closet and attached it to a hot air balloon. Jumped up in our studio and then jumped out of it. I saw her from her viral video of her just jumping from something else. So I hit her up and was like, can you do this wearing my stuff? It's... It's literally right there. We see all the stuff that goes viral every day. It just right. incorporate you into it. So you don't really have to think. If you enjoy social media, you you have way more content ideas than you already know. This is all coming easy for you. You're just like, just, just. It just makes just, sense. Just, just do just, this. This is, everything you're saying right now is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Because you are <laughs> brilliant. And what you accomplished is brilliant. And it takes as somebody who is also an entrepreneur, it mm -hmm. takes a lot to make a business work. Mm -hmm. It is not easy. And now you've made a business work for over five years. Yeah. Which most businesses are like know, done we, in five years. We like got over that hump. So yeah. you're over the hump. Mm -hmm. And so when you're thinking about where you're going next, what do you see for Brandon? I, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Just guessing, just sitting here talking to you of where you're headed. But I want to know from you, like, where, what do you see for yourself and for the brand? I'm so indecisive and, like, weird that I don't, I don't know exactly. I have an idea of what I want to do, mm -hmm. but I don't know how or when it's going to play out. But I definitely want to get into, like, fragrance. That's mm -hmm. something that, like, a lot of the customers have been asking. A lot more smaller goods. I've always wanted to do, like, a sneaker Mm. And then I want to do a lot. I have like a dream list of like collabs mm -hmm. that I'd like to do. Okay. That we're kind of working on now. Something's going to happen. Where we're going to okay. be like the first black brand to do it. And it's like mad people are going to see it. I cannot wait. A lot of cool stuff is happening. Okay. Will you ever do kids? Okay. Because I would love to get my there daughter Brandon Blackwood back, 
black backpack. I've always I've always <laughs> thought about the like, you know, mommy and me, like mm-hmm. hair and me matching. So <laughs> that's something for sure. And then I also we randomly we got a lot of requests for like baby bags. I can see that. Because like the moms still want to look like yeah, cool. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm playing around with that, but that has so many things in it. I'm not a parent. So it's one of um one of my employees that had production, Gabby. I made some samples. I gave them to her. Uh-huh. She came back with them, like, with the spit up and everything. I was like, well, I guess it worked. But, you know, like, uh, so we're working on some things. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, what has been some of, like, your biggest challenges? Like, what are some of the things that people see you and a lot of times when you're in a place where you're in, people see mm-hmm. you and they're just like, everything is great. I mm-hmm. want to be you. Like, I mm-hmm. wish I were where you are. Mm-hmm. What are some of the challenges that you've had to face and and have you been able to overcome them? I mean, the two off the bat would be, I mean, you know this, because I've called you almost in tears, but like, just like mental health and just like trying to find a way to navigate a very unusual way of living life. And it's a very weird day to day. So I think mental health has been like the biggest thing for me and just finding like me the person outside yeah. of all of it that's the biggest challenge and like it's so funny whenever people are like you know oh you're doing great or like whatever in my head I'm like I'll be crying I'll be crying so much like you have no clue <laughs> and but it's real and that's yeah, just what it so is real. so I think mental health is super important that's like my biggest thing I've been consistently going to therapy and like You've told me a couple books and things to read, so you've definitely helped out. Um, if y'all don't know, I will text Brandis or call Brandis and just be like, I don't feel good. I don't feel good at all. And Brandis is always been like any super moment, sweet. Anytime, any moment. Like, I adore you. And I really appreciate that. And um, I guess the non-deep answer to that, too, would be just keeping a consistent flow. Mm. It's really difficult, like, making sure things are on time, making sure everything's good. No matter how many people you have, no matter how big a company is, it's never going to ever be fully put together. And learning to accept that and learning how to navigate that and navigate it and learning how to, like, build and tighten the screws that may not ever be fully fixed. Right. But that's been a hard thing, for sure. I love that you shared that because there are so many people who are watching this who are entrepreneurs and they just say, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because sometimes you think, okay, it's just me. Mm-hmm. And it's not. Yeah, like, you really think you're not. It's just, entrepreneurship is not easy. It's not easy. It's, there's no right way to do it. It's so specific to what you're doing. Yeah. That even if you have a mentor, you might not, Get all the tools you need. Absolutely. It's really trial and error, and that's the best way to like explain it. Have you been able to find a mentor in this industry that have been able to say, hey, this is like maybe it's like a another large brand or somebody mm-hmm. at that brand who's been able to give you some tips or give you the shortcut? I don't think you've had a shortcut, but no, like it's weird. I am cool with a lot of accessory designers, like way bigger than me and like newer people but in terms of mentorship i think there's like one person in my life that's the ceo of like a huge makeup conglomerate so doesn't do bags but Mm -hmm. he has been the person i just call up i'm like i think i want to do this what do you think right you know i've called michael kors before i love that yeah i've called michael and like i'm like um i think i don't know what i'm doing you have an idea like um he's cool too yeah he's, he's cool. A really cool yeah i would say i would consider you like a mentor I love and you. then <laughs> um steward at coach has always been like super supportive like, steward is incredible Stuart, steward's really nice yeah, and then great guy yeah but i don't know it's like I don't have do I, I don't have like an everyday person I think. But still, the fact that you're able to pick up the phone and call these other people is amazing. I mean, amazing. that's like kind of major. Yeah, yeah so that's absolutely major. That's been nice. Outside of fashion, mm-hmm. putting fashion to the side, putting mm-hmm. your business to the side, what's yeah. the thing that you love to do? So I've 
through this, I found a hobby that I really liked, which is interior design. Mm. Um, my, I designed my whole office. Okay. My homes have always been featured in like different magazines and stuff. Like, it's a thing I never like went in. I never went in thinking like, oh, I'm the best at. But like every time I do it, I always get a compliment. So I'm like, yeah. okay, so that's been a thing. I love to garden. Um, my last yeah. house, I had two peach trees that were like in New York. I had a peach tree growing really? up. Really? It was the best. It's the best. Like, give me some peaches. I literally. <laughs> So many, and then I would say you have a peach tree in New York, though. Mm-hmm, two. How that and they work? Because peach trees, the roots grow. I know one of the. I have one in a, a box, and then one I put in the ground. And I know okay. I'm gonna regret that in a couple years, but oh yeah, the for roots now, are like I know. Yeah, and then um, I would say really just spending real time with my friends. Yeah, like not work related, just yeah. like I have friends that will just like be in the neighborhood and just like knock on the door and be like, "What's up?" or like. Just regular, normal, non-brand related things. So That's you can my just hobby. Like, and yeah. how often are you able to do Because for me, sometimes it's so hard for me to turn it off. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just like, I need a it's, moment where I can like literally turn off everything mm-hmm. HFR. It's so hard it's, to do. It's an extension of you. So it's yeah. like, it's really difficult. Um, my assistant, Gina, she is very good at being like, I think you should like not do this. Or like I cleared your calendar. And sometimes I'm like, Gina, no, like I just need uh-huh. to do it. I just uh-huh. need to like uh-huh. knock it out and just do uh-huh. it because blah, blah blah. But she does even sometimes against my will really like help me out with that too. Like getting a little bit of a break. I think she'd want me want me to have more of a break, but I love that. I, tr- I, try I love it. it. Thank you, Gina. Yes, thank thanks, you. Gina. So I I'm gonna I wanna end this way. Um, there's an entrepreneur. They are probably, I don't know, they're in New York. They could be in Memphis. They could be in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And they're looking at you and what you've built. And they're so inspired by you. Mm-hmm. Like, just look into that camera mm-hmm. and, like, leave them your final words. Oh, that's intense. Okay. I'll start with the corny stuff first, which is, like, don't give up. Like, actually, be a little delusional. Reach out. Network out. It's not always about networking up, network out. Your friends who are also doing other things related and unrelated to you, you can find a way to make it mesh. And I'm going to say it one more time. Be delusional and follow it. it. It's there for a reason. Perfect. Thank you so much, Brandon. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited that we finally got Brandon Blackwood <laughs> on the Fashion to Color podcast. <laughs> this is incredible. So many Thank jams. You. So many jams. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Fashion and Color Podcast. I want to thank our production partner, PBA Entertainment, the Harlem's Fashion Row team. Thank you so much for your support of Harlem's Fashion Row and for your support of Designers of Color. Please be sure to leave us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to share this with a friend. Welcome to the HFR movement.